good morning everyone uh, this is uh, Sunday morning for me I get up early and come into the office and record this message get it out on YouTube I'm glad that you joined me and I appreciate uh, your support and your thoughts and your comments to uh, these messages uh, and also uh, week after week uh, you coming back uh, to listen uh, it means so much to me and I really appreciate it so very much uh, big shout out uh, to my good buddy Ken Lewis and his wife Joyce who are going through some difficult health problems at, at this particular moment. If you would lift them up in prayer and uh, Ken we love you, praying for you uh, and uh, praying for many in our church family and for you who join uh, uh, each Sunday uh, with the needs that you have. And if I can pray for you in any way, please contact me uh, here at the church or you can email me. We have a website. There's ways that you can contact me. Some, uh, Most of you should have my cell phone number. You can text or leave comments in the video on Facebook. Now, let me know uh, if you have any needs that I can pray for you about and also even put you on our prayer chain. We have a wonderful group of people that meet every Sunday evening. I've been doing it ever since, well, long before I got here, and that's been 15 years ago. But they meet on Sunday evening and they just, they pray and lift up these needs over and over and over again. Just keep praying uh, for uh, the people of our church and people in our community. Well, today is, is what we call uh, First Responder Sunday. There are certain Sundays in, in our liturgical calendar uh, that uh, we as United Methodists recognize and First Responder Sunday is one of those Sundays. Because I have several first responders uh, uh, in my congregation that people work in the fire department, police department, people that's in military, uh, nurses. Uh, uh, there, there, there's a long list of what we call first responders. Those individuals, whenever there's a call, for someone who's in a crisis or in a need, <clears throat> that they are some of the first to respond, to be on scene, to take care of those needs. So today, we're going to have a sergeant from the Escambia County Police Department to come in and share what it means to be first responders and how uh, certainly that's needed in our community. So we're, we're just recognizing uh, first responders today, especially those in our congregation who are the first to respond whenever we are in crises. When I think about first responders, I think about those disciples that first responded to the call to follow Christ. And if we look in Mark's gospel, we, we read about four of those first responders. There were more, but today's text, we're just going to read about four. If, if you have your Bible, turn to Mark's gospel the first chapter, and we'll begin reading in the 14th verse. And the scripture says, after John, that's John the Baptist, you know, he had already come announcing Mark's gospel uh, begins not with a, a birth narrative, but the good news of the gospel about Jesus Christ. And immediately John the Baptist comes on the scene announcing uh, that we are to prepare the way to repent and prepare the way of the Lord. And then it says in, in verse 14, after John was put in prison, <clears throat> Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news. The time has come, Jesus said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe in the good news. You see, there's an urgency to this call. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Come and follow me, Jesus said, and I'll make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and they followed Jesus. When he had gone a little further, he saw James, James's son, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, James and John in a boat. They were preparing their nets, and without delay he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. They just walked right off the job and followed him. Uh, but there's an urgency to this. Can you, can you feel it? Can you sense it? Well, these are first some of the first responders uh, in the gospel who responded to Christ's call to be a disciple. 
And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father, may all the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. For we dedicate the hearing and the preaching of your word in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the church said, Amen and Amen. When I had uh, had the opportunity uh, uh, to serve uh, a particular church and had a men's group, um, we would meet on uh, once a month on Saturday morning and have breakfast together. Uh, it was a wonderful time of men. We had about 30 that would come uh, on a Saturday morning and cook breakfast. I had some that would cook breakfast and We'd go over uh, events that were happening in our church and how the men's group could get involved and work in mission and ministry uh, and celebrate a meal together and pray for one another. Uh, at the end of the meeting, we would sort of open it up for anyone uh, that would like to pray uh, before uh, I would, as the pastor, would close everything out and we'd get ready to leave. Well, there was one particular gentleman that would always pray and without fail, he ended his prayer with the same request. It went something like this, and I can just remember it. I, I, I've heard it so many times, I, I, I have a fond memory of it. This little uh, request this gentleman makes to the Lord. It goes like this, Lord, thank you for all of those who serve in our military and for the first responders. And he'd close out his prayer. You know, even though I had come to expect hearing that uh, month after month after month, it was never offered, I don't believe, as merely a, root, a routine prayer. You know, sometimes we have routine prayers that we pray, especially at, at blessings at, at the table. You know, it's just something we always pray. For both, uh, for this particular gentleman, I know it was always spoken with a deep sense of gratitude, you could feel the appreciation that he had for first responders. And this was a passionate plea for God's blessing and God's protection over their lives. And I come to realize that he had several first responders in his life and had also even lost one of his family members who was a first responder who was responding to a crisis and died in the midst of that response. I don't know about the other men who were there listening to that prayer, what kind of effect that it had on their life, but I know what kind of effect that it had on my life. It made me take notice more of those first responders and these individuals who are serving in these roles, whether it was a volunteer fire department or an officer in uniform or someone in the military. So I, I am impressed by the dedication of these public servants from firefighters to police officers to EMTs to those who serve in the National Guard or enlist in a branch of military. When things go wrong and people are in trouble in the world, they are often the first to respond. And more than that even, they go to work every day realizing that anything could happen, anticipating that they'll rise to whatever call that is placed before them at the same time, they also are, are aware that those calls will sometimes put them in extreme danger. They don't know what the crises may be in store for that particular day, but they're willing to get up each and every day and go in and serve. Such service, I think, is an act of courage, it's an act of compassion, and I believe it's an act of faith that they can serve uh, as an inspiration for us uh, to respond in our own ways to opportunities of service around us. Our gospel text today, as I said earlier, is about, I believe, first responders. Those men who took an enormous risk to answer a strange man's call who walks along the sea, and he calls these fishermen from the shoreline to come and follow him. And they follow immediately, like our modern day first responders. The, the, the disciples answer a sounding alarm, particularly in Mark's telling of the story because there's such an urgent plea. This is the gospel that begins 
This is the gospel that begins not with a sweet birth narrative, but with a wild man coming out of the wilderness shouting words from Isaiah to repent and believe and prepare for the coming of the Lord. In just a few verses, we have a whirlwind of activities such as Jesus being baptized and spending 40 days being tempted in the wilderness, uh, all captured in just a couple of verses. Jesus then comes announcing a high-level alert that something big is about to happen, and he needs people to respond, to drop what they're doing immediately and respond to the call. And Jesus spells it out clearly. He says that the time is being fulfilled, that the kingdom of God is at hand. And this proclamation begins a dual begins with a dual sense of alarm. It's now the, the, the kingdom of God is breaking in. And it also has a, a sense of assurance. On one hand, everything is about to change. A new day is dawned. It's time to wake up and to pay attention to what God is doing in our world. And on the other hand, there's a comfort in knowing that the fullness of time has come, that the kingdom is at hand. It brings an assurance that the outcome is already known or at least anticipated, but the disciples at this particular point don't understand any of that. I want you to note something here. Jesus does not just announce the time. He fulfills it. I like that. The kingdom of God is at hand. What does he mean? I'm here. I'm at hand. The kingdom, the fullness of the kingdom, I am here. And he announces that in word and in flesh, and he calls people to respond to him and to respond to the kingdom plea. As is in common in Mark's gospel, you'll see this word over and over again. It says immediately, immediately. Well, immediately sets the tone and the responses of these two sets of disciples. There's not time to discuss it. There's not time to have a family meeting. It's not time for them to say, oh, well, let me pray about it. Now get back with you at a later date. That's not, that's not the response. But they are to leave immediately and follow Jesus' call. Nothing in verses uh, 16 through 20 tells us why these fishermen do what they do. They just left off. Why they would leave their nets why they would leave hired workers, why they would leave families to follow Jesus. Somehow, they're compelled to follow Christ, unsure of what's going to happen, unsure of the destination or what tomorrow will bring. The fishermen, now disciples, simply act in faith, not a faith that understands, not a faith that takes uh, uh, calculated risk, and not a faith that seeks reward, but a faith that simply responds to a call from the outside, a call that must remain unclear and at times even frightening and even dangerous. You see, responding to Jesus provides the disciples with no answers for their life struggles, but only more questions. It provides them with no security but rather with rejection, we know that's going to happen, and even danger, we know that's going to happen, and even death, because those who followed Christ, many of them were put to death in a horrible way. What we do know is that these four men and others responded immediately to the call upon their life. They don't appear to have superhuman characteristics. There was nothing really outstanding or special about them. They're common, everyday working people. or they're, they're, they're not even really particularly qualified for the mission. However, this story is not about teaching a, a particular set of skills. <clears throat> Jesus, when he said, come and follow me, I'll teach you how to fish for men. In other words, Jesus is not trying to teach them uh, a skill set. But what he's doing is saying, if you'll follow me, it's more about transformation of your life for these first responders in a way that shapes their identity as followers of Christ. They're called to embrace a whole new way of life 
one that would involve leaving their livelihood, one that would involve them leaving their families and walking into a future of many unknowns. And immediately, even with the full weight of their entire identity at stake, they left their nets, they left their family, they left their occupation, and they followed this itinerant preacher. Now, this is a story more than just about four fishermen, I believe. For us now, it's about what we are going to make of the realization that the kingdom of God is near us. How do we respond to God's call each and every day to follow him? Do we respond, are we some of the first responders that God can count on when he says, I need you to respond to this crisis. I need you to respond to this need. I need you to respond because the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is here. And the kingdom of God is within you. How will we respond? This text calls us to consider whether or not we might identify as first responders of faith. On a more personal level, this is a basic question of belief. In other words, who are we following? What are we becoming? How are our lives giving for the kingdom work and purpose? Some of us may identify at a special moment when we think God called us to follow him. We think more of it as a, a call to just be a Christian, uh, a call to be, you know, a follower of Jesus. Others might even know the exact date or the time uh, uh, and and then the others may just have this sense of God sort of nudging them into a journey. Either way, we know that our faith is always a response to the invitation of God to come and follow him. Uh, and I believe that's how it works. God lays the foundation. He brings things into fullness. He opens our eyes. He sounds the alarm. And we, we respond to that call by faith. Yes, Lord, I'll be your disciple. I'll follow you. I'll give you my life. You can have all of my resources. Everything that I have is available to you, Lord. And what is it that you would like for me to do in your kingdom work? Uh, and I believe that's, that's how God calls all of us. You know, uh, often we're, when we feel God's call upon our life, we feel that it, you know, we come to church, we sing Jesus Loves Me, other hymns of praise, we wrestle with scripture, we ask tough questions, and when we walk in the door on Sunday morning, we hope to hear some good news so that we can walk out maybe different than a little bit different when we are when we come in. But listen, every time we open our Bibles and begin to pray, we are responding to God in faith. Did you know that? We are responding to God. We're saying, we have decided to follow Jesus. I love that little song that we used to sing as children. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I remember that. You see, we are identifying ourselves as disciples. That's, that's who we are. It's what we are. If we're not careful, though, we can become so apathetic to that call upon God's life that we no longer hear it. We tell ourselves we don't have time. Life is too busy. We're not ready. That we don't feel qualified that we don't have the resources and we just become apathetic to the call of God to follow him, to bring about kingdom change in our world or in our families or in our church or in our communities. But see, I love this passage of scripture. Our text today offers us a new opportunity to begin this call or to renew the call if we responded years and years ago. Because our identity as disciples of Jesus Christ then uh, 
rest upon whether or not we are responding by faith to God's call on our life. We're called to scan our eyes on the horizon of our lives to see where God breaks in, even in the most ordinary moments of our existence. One of the things that I learned in uh, a study of experiencing God with Henry Blackaby is that God is always at work around me. God is never not at work. God is always doing something, and it's always kingdom work. And instead of me saying, you know, God, uh, trying to come up with something good that I think that might be helpful and ask God to bless what I'm trying to do, Blackaby reminds us in that in that study, Experiencing God, that God is at work. Open our eyes. Ask God to help us see where God is at work in our world. God is at work in our work. God is at work in our communities, in our churches, and in our families. And if we can see where God is at work and what God is doing, and God can give us the spiritual eyes to see that, then we are to respond immediately. Be first responders to what God is doing and join God at his work where he is. May we be first responders in our lives of faith, on our feet, leaping into action whenever there's a call for us to get involved, whenever there's a call to help the church and to help others, immediately reacting to God's presence among us in our life to seeing God at work, then we can truly call ourselves followers and disciples of Jesus Christ. To all the first responders out there, uh, and to you, it may be, you may be a first responder, or you have someone in your family, friends, or in your network of influence. I pray that uh, the Lord's blessing will be upon your life. I pray for safety. Uh, I pray that God would empower you. I pray that God would keep you safe in all things. As you respond to some of the most severe crises in our world and in our life and in the life of our families as well. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord's countenance rise up and support you in all that you do. May God empower you to be his disciple. Go in peace and may the peace of God go with you. Amen and amen.